Hello, it's Ella Bright from Mallory Towers. Happy reading month. Today, I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite moments from the books I've seen in the series. So let's get started. Now, it wouldn't be Mallory Towers without a prank. So here's one of my favorites, the sneezing trick. Daryl slipped into the form room with a little pellet. The others came in to get ready for the class. They raised their eyebrows at Daryl. She nodded back, smiling. They all took their places and waited for Mamselle. She came in, beaming as usual. Asseyez-vous, mes enfants. Today we have a great, great treat. It's a test. <laughs> Deep groans from the class. She turned to write on the blackboard and got the first whiff of the fine vapor, quite invisible, that was streaming from the curious little pellet. Mademoiselle felt a tickling in her nose and searched for her handkerchief. Now open your books. Bless you. She snatched at her handkerchief and pressed it to her nose but no handkerchief could choke down that colossal sneeze. Mamzelle always did sneeze loudly at any time, but this time it sounded like an explosive shell. Oh, oh dear me, oh, here is another. The last one was so terrific that it shook Mamzelle right out of her chair. By now the class was in convulsions. Tears of laughter were pouring down the cheeks of half a dozen girls. Next, we have the infamous moment in the first form. Gwendolyn did not enjoy working so hard. Daryl laughed to her and told the others why there was such a sudden change in the lazy Gwendolyn. She doesn't want her people to know that she told such fibs to them at half term, she said. Does she, Mary Lou? That's what comes of boasting, Gwendolyn. Sooner or later, you'll have to eat your words. Mary Lou laughed too. She was much bolder nowadays, though only when Daryl or Sally was there. Gwendolyn scowled at her. Horrid little turncoat. Gwendolyn had a chance of paying Mary Lou out the next day. She went into the classroom when there was no one else there. And in Mary Lou's desk was her precious fountain pen. Gwendolyn saw it at once. That's the end of that, she said spitefully and threw it on the floor. She stamped on it hard and the pen smashed, spilling ink all over the wooden floor. And in the second, Mary Lou finds herself in yet more trouble. The cry came again on the wind, very faint. Here, here, it seemed to come from somewhere in front. Gwen struggled on against the wind. She followed the edge, ran cautiously, not daring to go too near, for the wind was so strong. Still, it seemed to be dying down a little now. She suddenly heard Mary Lou's voice much nearer. Oh, oh Mary Lou, help, I'm here, here. And there, a few feet below was poor Mary Lou, clinging for dear life to a ledge. Help, I can't hold on much longer. Gwen was horrified. She could see that if Mary Lou did leave go, she would hurtle down to the rocks a long way below. Her heart went cold at the thought. What could she do? And finally, in book four, Felicity arrives. Daryl Rivers was very excited. It was the day to return to Mallory Towers, and this time she was taking her younger sister Felicity with her. She had heard so much about her sister's school, the fun they had had there, the classrooms overlooking the sea, the four towers in which 250 girls slept, the great swimming pool hollowed out of the rocks on the shore. There was no end to the things that Daryl had told her. And so Felicity had the same first glimpse that Daryl had had four years back. Mallory Towers! There it is. Isn't it glorious? Four towers stood in the corners of the building and Felicity's eyes brightened as she thought of sleeping in one of those towers. She would be in the North Tower with Daryl and it had the best view of the sea. She was very, very lucky. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and don't forget you can watch all episodes of Mallory Towers on BBC iPlayer.